Hello everybody and welcome back to some more BD Armoury. Today, uh, today's a bit of a different video. Uh, what you can see here is footage of me just doing a little bit of an experiment with uh, a ground-based missile unit. I've shown, have shown footage of something similar in the past, I think it's on one of my update videos. But uh, this is a slightly more comprehensive experiment, just, uh, just looking at trying to launch um, Air to ground missiles, but in a in a surface to surface role, and they uh, they work. And also also try to launch uh, some cruise missiles. They work as well. Um, although give yourself a bit of distance. I was about four kilometers out here, and that was um, yeah, that was about as close as you want to get. Uh, incidentally, in case you didn't know, you can use missiles like this on ground based units, but the uh, the AI won't fire the air to ground missiles like this. But uh, yes, today's video is going to be a mishmash of uh, different things. Basically, over the course of doing these videos, I've accumulated a, a few ideas which don't really warrant a video of their own, which I couldn't really justifiably stretch out over 10, 15, 20 minutes or what have you. So um, I'm just going to throw a collection of them together here. There's a couple of experiments, a couple of dogfights, so um, enjoy. So we start with an experiment, and I wanted to know if you could use dumb fire rockets as an effective air-to-air -air weapon if you had enough of them. And this was by far my dumbest idea of the bunch, so good news, the video can only go uphill from here. But I took one of my cyclones, I kitted it out almost entirely with Hydra rocket pods, took off everything else, the guns and everything, and uh, took two of them up to fight each other. Um, now, to begin with, this didn't go too well, because as they didn't really have any weapons to fire at distance, they just flew straight at each other and then flew into each other. Not a great start, but uh, I persevered. I uh, went into the autopilot settings and uh, notched, down their, uh, notched down their maximum speed, hoping they would actually get an opportunity to fire at each other before they flew into each other. So I went into the autopilot settings, I notched the maximum speed down, hopefully to give them a chance to fire off some shots before they fly into each other, and um, well, it was an improvement, they didn't fly into each other, but the, uh, the BD Armoury autopilot just will not fire these things as an air-to-air -air weapon. Um, so this was a bit of a bust. I did try it with the, uh, with the other type of uh, dumbfire rocket, I can't remember the name of it, the S8, I think it is. But again, the uh, the BD Armoury autopilot wouldn't fire it, no matter what I did. So um, I thought I could go up and try it manually, but yeah, my manual flying skills. I decided just to cut my losses, chalk it up to experience, and move on. But hey, at least I know now. Yeah, let's 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 move on. So on to our next experiment. Now uh, I've seen a lot of speculation in various places as to what it is that the BD Armoury. Uh, AI is actually trying to shoot at. I've heard some people say it's the uh, it's the weapons manager. Other people say it's the it's the command module, whatever that might be. So I thought I'd test that. I've got this large target wall, and um, just in case the AI decides to shoot at the, like the center of mass or whatever it is, I put a various I put some various other alternatives off to the side here. We've got a, a manned uh, manned command module, uh, manned in or indeed womaned in this case by Rowena Kerman, because I'm I'm not going to risk one of the orange shirts on this. I've also got uh, an AI unit, I've got a probe core, and up in this corner we have a weapon manager. And over here we have one of my medium tanks, this time armed with a goalkeeper cannon. So uh, let's put the guard mode on on both of them and see what happens. Okay, that's interesting. He seems to want to go straight down the middle. Maybe slightly towards the bottom. I think, looking at the way this is configured, I th think that means the AI is trying to go for the center of mass. I mean, even when there's nothing there, my tank keeps trying to fire straight, just slightly below the center of this target. So... As I said, it appears to be going for the center of mass. Uh, I'm not sure how you'd use that information or exploit that information, or even if you could exploit that in any way. Um, but I just wanted to put that one to bed one way or the other. So uh, let's see what's next. 
So next up we have another little experiment. Um, now, some of you may recognise this as my Apis. It's a low part fighter I developed a couple of videos ago now. Um, and basically it got creamed in all of its fights. But after the video, I started wondering how good a pound for pound fighter is this? Or to be more exact in this context, how good a part for part fighter is it? So um, I looked through my other craft and I noticed that my cyclone was almost exactly twice as many parts as this is. So what I have done is I have lined up four of my apices, apices, api, let's not get back into that. I've lined up four of them against two of my cyclones and we are going to get them into the air and see what happens. So our fighter's just about getting to the correct range and then here we go. Now one area where the apices will have an advantage is in the missile competition because two cyclones each set up to fire up one missile per target. I think they should only really keep two of these apices busy. Although they all seem to be all seem to be breaking low to dodge missiles. Oh that was a bit close there, that apis looking like it might have got a bit scorched. But uh yeah, the, uh, the Apices, as I said, should be able to keep the uh, Cyclones on the ropes until they can get a little bit closer. And there goes some gunfire. Shulric Kerman. Can you get a kill this early on? Another missile goes in for that Cyclone, but nothing doing for the moment. Now, these Apices are a little unsteady in the shot as we've found out in a couple of videos now, but um, there's two of them on the tail of this cyclone, but Sharik has to break off because he's got a missile on his tail. We are here with Bilden Kerman. I think it's the same cyclone in her sights. Can she do the job? Oh, she decides to switch, switch targets and switch to missiles interesting choice. The missile misses and Bilden is out of missiles but nowhere near out of bullets. And oh! One of the cyclones gets scorched but uh, manages to carry on regardless. Oh but then gets shredded. Jebediah Kerman. Oh no! Well you live by the sword you... Oh! And there goes the other one. And this Apis Well, our, uh, our Apis pilots there, very sportingly doing their best to even the score, but uh, I don't think the result was ever really in any doubt. Um, uh, two two planes are better than one, and uh, my Apises take the newly invented crown of my best part-for-part -part fighter. Um, but there's still one more thing I want to do today, so uh, let's get cracking with that. So we end today's video with a subscriber suggestion. One of my subscribers, Yosef Stalin, no, not that one, um, suggested uh, suggested a whole bunch of crap, but I think he um, think he wanted me to do the Su-47 more than the others, and the Su-47 did kind of stand out as the most doable among them. So, um, well, I've made an Su-47. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. Uh, the canards, uh, the thing that kind of sticks out here, uh, there weren't really there wasn't really an ideal part to put there, so I've just gone for standard canards. But that aside, I think I've, I've done something that comes pretty close to it, but um, that's enough looking at it. Let's go and fight it. So here we are. I've lined three of these Su-47s up and they are going to be going up against my Cyclones. I'm giving them a chance for redemption. Plus they're kind of my Eurofighter-esque craft and the Eurofighters were basically built as, an, as a, a Sukhoi killer, so um, yeah, should make for an interesting fight. Let's get them all into the air. So it begins. Um, the Su-47's not the most manoeuvrable craft I've ever built, um, but that, I think that kind of happens when you try and build uh, real-life aircraft. Uh, also, I wasn't quite sure what the proper loadout on an Su-47 is supposed to be. Uh, I mean, they never 
never actually entered production as a combat aircraft, so um, I'm not sure they ever had the standard armament. But I've just I've just done them, kind of one of my own standard armaments, um, and hoping that will do the job. Janlus Kerman here in the lead Su-47, finally getting a missile away before turning to dodge some more. Yeah, really interesting looking craft with the forward swept wing. I was reading up on the air. Oh, that was a bit close. Yeah, I was reading up on the whole um, principles of why you sh might want to use a forward swept wing. It's really quite interesting. Um, things like stall characteristics, stability, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, if you're interested in that sort of thing, definitely check it out. But uh, we are closing. Oh, that's another missile exploding very close to Janlus, and I think we should just about be reaching gun range with some of these craft at some point. But for the time being, the missile tennis continues. Let's see what's going on with my, some of my other Su-47s. Dogen Kerman lets loose a missile misses his target before reacquiring a new one and now we have guns we're back to Janlus Kerman who is trying to light up this cyclone will the SU-47s get one over on the cyclones oh Jan Janlus scorches that cyclone yeah I think it's looking a little bit like the uh, SU-47s are getting the better of it but has that cyclone managed to do the old switcheroo doesn't look like it. How's everyone else getting on? Dogen now brings gun to bear on that cyclone. Can he help out his wingman before that cyclone does some serious damage? Oh! That is that cyclone getting scorched again. Which one is it? I think it's you. Has a missile incoming, has to break off, but now has two Su-47s. It's Jebediah. Jebediah now has two Su-47s trying to blast him out of the air, but that one may have made a mistake as Jebediah tries to turn round to engage. That is a... Oh! Just as he gets scorched. Oh! And that is that Su-47 out of here as we've lost one of the cyclones as well. One kill apiece. Jandin Kerman loses a missile. Has to break up. I think he had a missile incoming for him as well. What was that? That is cyclone debris. Milvin Kerman. Not your day, buddy. Sorry. Two kills to one. Are both the Su-47s flying? Yes, they are. It's a one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one situation. That cyclone oh, scorches the Su-47, but his wingman will be trying to finish that cyclone off before it can do too much damage. That cyclone does indeed break off now because of the threat, giving Jandin an opportunity. Ooh, almost a bit of a joust there but not quite. Tries to turn around to reacquire a target. Now he's got a good shot. That is a really good shot. Scorches the SU-47. Oh! Loses a bunch of stuff himself, Jebediah, and he's lost his autopilot. Gets shredded as that SU-47 comes flying past. The SU-47 is just trying to pick off what's left of Jebediah's craft now. So that is a... Uh, that is a quite convincing victory for the SU-47s. Jebediah, hang on in there. Well, it's a hang on in there. It's it, The autopilot's gone. I'm just watching this craft spin out of control as the other craft take pot shots at it. Anyway, yes, victory for the Sukhois, and that will bring an end to today's video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Something a bit different. Uh, if you did like it, please let me know in the comments, uh, and I, I may, may well do another similar one at some point in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.